Hey Mathletes, um, in this video we're going to talk about how do you graph a function where we, the transformations only occur on the period length. Okay, so we're dealing with um, something that has a change in the B value, which is going to affect the width of the period. Okay, so we're going to do what we did in the last video where we um, identify the key components of the graph. So um, what is the amplitude? What is the period length? What is the increment or um, how far between the quarter points? Uh, what is the phase shift? And what is the vertical shift? Okay, so these are the key uh, components of the graph and when we have these things we can come up with our table and we can also come up with um, then from the and then from the table we can plot the points and sketch the curve okay so what do we have we've got x y and the pattern right and let's go ahead and come up with the components, right? The amplitude is going to be whatever's in front of the function, and this is an implied one. So we have an amplitude of one. The period is found by taking two pi and dividing it by the B value. The B value here is three over two. So we have two pi divided by three over two, which is the same as two pi times two over three, which is uh, four, 4 pi over 3. Okay, and then the increment is going to be the period divided by 4. So period divided by 4. And since we already have a fraction here, let's think of it as 1 fourth of that period. So 1 fourth of 4 pi over 3. And notice that those 4s divide out. We're just left with pi over 3. All right, phase shift is 0. The vertical shift is zero, okay? Because we, there's no C value, there's no D value. All right, now remember that your X, your initial X value will be the phase shift. So our phase shift first is zero. So our first X value is zero. And then we're gonna count by this increment. We're gonna count by pi over three. So first, second X value is pi over three. The next one is pi over three plus pi over three or two pi over three. The next one, add pi over three to get, no, add pi over three to that, you get three pi over three, which is pi. And the last one will be four pi over three. All right, now thinking about the pattern, we have a cosine function here. And so remember that the cosine function looks like this for looking just directly to the right of the y-axis. And so remember that we're gonna start up at the max, then go to the middle, down to the minimum, back to the middle, and then up to the max again. Okay, so that's our pattern. Max, middle, minimum, middle, and max again. Okay, uh, and that's always the pattern, unless there's a reflection and then the max and the mid switch, I'm sorry, the max and the min switch places there. So when you have a function like this, all of the middles are going to be the vertical shift. And so we know our vertical shift is going to be zero. And so we can go ahead and put those in there. So zero and zero. And then we're going to add and subtract our amplitude to get our max and our min. Our max will be zero plus our amplitude, which is one. And our minimum will be zero minus our amplitude. So that's gonna be negative one. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and plot these points here. And, and now this is a little tricky because do you see that this is pi over three? I notice right here, look at this, that um, this, this unit of pi is actually cut into one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, okay? So I need to actually think of these things as with a denominator of six instead. So this is gonna be two pi over six. This will be four pi over six. 
this will be 6 pi over 6, and this will be 8 pi over 6. So my x values, if I convert those to 6, they make them easier to plot. All right, so my first uh, coordinate is 0, 1. And then our second coordinate is 2 pi over 6. So here's 1, 2, and it's 0. Next one is 4 pi over 6, so two more tick marks over and down to negative 1. Then we got pi 0, and then back up to 8 pi over 6. going to be two of those tick marks over and up to the y value of 1. And then we just, you know, you would use this tool here and sketch that curve. So this is what it looks like when you put it all together. All right, hope this helps you and I'll give you another one in a moment.